Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We are in the middle of an amazing series, The Message to the Hebrews. Powerful lessons for our lives today, and today's topic, really important, Jesus, the faithful priest. What Jesus is doing even now for us in the heavenly sanctuary, I know you'll be blessed, and we're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School study today. Welcome to the team. Good to see you again. I love Hope Sabbath School team. We're glad you're here. I'm particularly excited because one of our team members, John, is going to be teaching today. John, we're excited. God's been preparing John all of his life to share the Word of God, and we're going to have a great in-depth interactive study today. We're also excited to have some of our team members joining us remotely. Haiti, great to have you from South Carolina. Glad you're here again today. Puya from Hawaii. Puya, good to see you. Glad you're here. And Shana from Maine. Good to see you, Shana. We're so thankful that some of our team members who may not be able to travel all the way here to the studio can participate remotely. And we're just so thankful that you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family too. Before I forget, we have a special gift for you. This series on the message to the Hebrews is all about Jesus. And as we were preparing, we thought maybe there's someone who would like to learn more about what Jesus taught about himself and important Bible teachings. And so we're offering a free gift to you. All you have to do is go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess, and in the center of the page, there's a button, free gift. It's that simple. Just click on it. You can receive either a digital audio book or a PDF of the teachings of Jesus that will bless your life to be able to bless the lives of others. So go to our website, click on the button for the free gift. I know you'll be blessed. We also love to hear from you, our Hope Sabbath School family around the world. Lots of different countries. Here's one from Zenus in Malawi, in the heart of Africa. Travis, you've been to Malawi, haven't you? I have. And you've seen God working there in some amazing ways. Hello, Hope Sabbath School team. Hello. Zenus gets the wave. Your program and lessons strengthen me to have an in-depth study and a better understanding of the Word of God. May the good Lord keep on richly blessing you as you continue serving Him. Well, Zenas, thank you for taking the time to write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. We'd love to hear from you, by the way, how God is blessing your life through a study of His Word. I think Bing has written to us before from Dubai in the United mm -hmm. Arab Emirates. Bing, thanks for writing again. I always watch your show. <laughs> I'm usually with my children during their Bible study hour, so I'm not able to attend my adult Bible study class. I like the way you focus on the core study each week. Well, Bing, we're glad that you're taking advantage of Hope Sabbath School to be in the Word of God yourself, as well as caring for your children. Here's a real live note. We get these every once in a while. This one is from a donor in New Mexico. You say, Derek, how come you don't mention their names? Well, we don't want to highlight people, but we do want to say thank you, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. This is a donor-supported ministry. We thank you for being a part of this impact movement as we prepare for the coming of Jesus. The donor writes, thank you for your programs. I am unable to attend church. Your Hope Sabbath School helps me to stay connected with what's important. Praise God. Wow. And a gift, God bless the ministry, a gift of $500 mm -hmm. to help Hope Sabbath School. Thank you. You know who you are there in New Mexico. Thank you for your generous donation. And thanks to each one of you. You can go to hopetv.org slash donate and you can make a gift. Say, I want to be part of this great miracle as we help others prepare for the soon coming of Jesus. Bishok writes from Ethiopia. Now, I recognize that name too. Maybe some years ago, Bishok wrote and says, With unaccountable words, I would like to thank God for your blessed team, which inspires many lives in this sinful world. Mm -hmm. But then comes an appeal from Bishok. Mm -hmm. I am a sinner whom Satan is using for his purposes, but my heart is looking up on the way to be healed. Amen. You have to help me in prayer, Bishop writes, that my faith will be strong again. 
my study will be successful, and my life will be transformed. Amen? Amen. God bless you, Bishop. And we're so thankful that you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. If Hope Sabbath School was just for perfect people, mm. we wouldn't even be here, would we? <laughs> but we're all pilgrims on the way to the kingdom, and we're so thankful for each one. A final note, we have such wonderful people in our Hope Sabbath School family, don't we? This is from Lovemore in Botswana. Lovemore is actually originally from Zimbabwe, living in Botswana. He says, my wife and I are 32 years of age. That's about the average age of our Hope Sabbath School team. <laughs> God has blessed us with four lovely sons. Amen. I recently completed a PhD in economics, and my wife has a master's degree in nursing education. I've not yet returned to Zimbabwe because of its present challenges. My wife is working as a nurse, and I'm lecturing in one of the local colleges. I would like to thank you and your team for taking us through the Bible study each week. Every Sabbath, I watch Hope Sabbath School with my family, and we have drawn closer to God. Amen. Isn't that precious? It is. Praise we enjoy the personal testimonies of your team, and the insightful thoughts during each study. Our family really loves the Lord, and we look forward to the coming of our Savior. Mm -hmm. Please keep us in your prayers. Well, Lovemore, thanks for writing to us. God bless you as a husband and father for your family there in Botswana. And what an encouragement to us to hear from Hope Sabbath School members around the world. Thank you for being part of this global family. Right now, we need your help. <laughs> we need you to sing our theme song. It's a 3,000-year-old theme song, scripture song from Psalm 103. It's one of my favorites. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Let's sing it together. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, bless His holy name. Who heals all your diseases Who redeems your life from destruction Who crowns you with loving kindness And tender mercies Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, bless His holy name, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowned you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless His holy name, bless His holy name. Well, I'm looking forward to the study today. John, why don't you lead us in prayer as we begin Amen. our study? Amen. Thank you, Pastor Derek. Let's pray together. 
Father in heaven, we are so thankful for this opportunity to gather once again as a global family to study your word and to gain hope for today in what Jesus is doing for us right now. Mm. And so we ask for your spirit to be with us, with each viewer, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm really excited for this study. I'm enthusiastic because the book of Hebrews, as we've been studying here, really gives us a, a clear picture of what Jesus is doing in heaven for us right now. It's more than I think any other book. It gives us a clear picture. And we're going to see what Jesus is doing today as our high priest. What does it mean for us? And why is it important? Mm -hmm. So let's look. Travis, would you begin today and look up Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. Hebrews 5, 1 through 4. What we want to see is, how does Hebrews describe the function of the high priest in the Levitical priesthood? What does that say? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray since he himself is also subject to weakness. Because of this, he is required as for the people, so also for himself, to offer sacrifices for sins. And no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God just as Aaron was. Mm -hmm. So based on this here, what are some of the functions or the roles that we see in the priest in the Hebrew or in the ancient uh, priesthood. Brittany? I think the most obvious one is he was offering sacrifices for sins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yep. Yes. Jason? I see it says, taken from among men for things pertaining to God. So he's mm. the re representative of the people for God and kind of an in-between between them. Ah, mm -hmm. so they were appointed to go on behalf of the mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Puya, anything else you see about the priest's role? Right. Uh, the basic function of a priest here is to mediate between sinful people and God. And from what we just read, it points out that they are appointed by God and they are able to have compassion on the sinners because they can relate to the weaknesses of the, sin the sinners as well. Wow. That is key, isn't it? That the yeah. priest was able to have compassion. He himself was subject Yes. to sins and to the propensities as the people were. Mm -hmm. Now, how does Jesus perfectly fulfill that role? Haiti, would you mind reading for us Hebrews 5, verses 5 through 9? Let's look at how Jesus fulfills the role of that great high priest. Absolutely. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says... So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Though his, he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Hey, thank you. Mm. We're going to talk about Melchizedek here in a moment, but based on what we see here, this description of Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, tell me what kind of comfort, encouragement you draw from this mm -hmm. passage. Mm -hmm. Please, Sabina. I really feel um, secure in God. <laughs> it gives me the sense that God cares for me, that He's watching over me, and that if there is anything out there that could ac accuse me of, I can just turn to Him and make, and I'm sure that He's going to provide for me that space of safety. And that for me makes a whole lot of difference in my life. Mm. Excellent. Travis? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just looking here and what I see is complete selflessness, mm -hmm. even to the point of being appointed high priest. Mm -hmm. That Jesus here is just totally focused on us. 
And uh, I, I keep saying these, this, repeating this verse because it keeps ringing in my head. He's not willing that any should perish. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that he's compassionate then, like the earthly priest was, was to be, we have a compassionate high priest who's self-giving, you know, not con concerned more with our well-being than his. Boy, that just, this just really resonates with my heart. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting that like the priests of old, the Levitical priesthood, that the high priest, Christ here for us, also offers gifts and sacrifices. Mm. Mm. But unlike the gifts of the Levitical priesthood, what sacrifices is the high priest offering? Mm. Brittany. Well, Jesus didn't offer a lamb. He was the lamb. He offered <laughs> yeah. his, his very self. Everything that he had, he mm -hmm. gave, mm -hmm. while the priest just gave a substitute. Mm -hmm. um, but Jesus gave everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And you yeah. know, the author John of Hebrews says he did it once for all. For all. Mm -hmm. And that's because it was the perfect, infinite mm -hmm. sacrifice mm -hmm. that would provide salvation for all who would believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shana, would you read for us First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. What we want to see here is what is our role as part of this royal priesthood? What is our role in First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Isn't that fascinating that our great high priest accounts us as part of this royal priesthood mm -hmm. <laughs> and that our role is to do what? But to proclaim, to live and to proclaim the praises of him who has called us. Mm -hmm. And so coming back to Melchizedek here, Lavinia, would you read for us Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 10. Who was Melchizedek? Let's study about him. Hebrews 5 and 10, reading from the New Living Translation, and God designated him to be a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Now you recall that the Levitical priesthood came after the order of Aaron, right? Or the Levites mm -hmm. priests. Mm -hmm. But Melchizedek came, or he lived before Levites, right? Before the tribe of Levi. Mm -hmm. Who was Melchizedek? And why was it, is it that it says that Christ came in the order of Melchizedek? Pedro, would you mind reading for us Genesis chapter 14, verses 18 through 20? Let's see what we can learn about Melchizedek particularly with the interactions that Abraham had with him. Mm -hmm. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, uh, Genesis 14, verses 18 to 20. And it says, Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out, of, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered you, uh, your enemies, into your hand. What do we know here about Melchizedek? Mm. I think, um, you know, as I was studying this lesson, I, th I was thinking, like, he doesn't have a background. And, and in order to be a priest in the Levitical priesthood, I mean, you had to have a documented background to make sure that you were of the tribe of Levi. And here we, we can't find a source for his beginning. And I thought, maybe that's the point. Mm. You know what I mean? Jesus is our, our, uh, our, our high priest in heaven. And he has no beginning and he always w was and always will be and always is. And I thought, maybe that's the point. I don't know. But, but um, we, don't, we don't find an origin with Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. That's strange, huh? Lavinia? Mm -hmm. I don't think you read many stories in the Bible where you have a king who is also a priest of mm. the Most High. Mm -hmm. And so it seems to foreshadow the role of Jesus. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yeah. There's some mystery around Melchizedek, mm -hmm. but in Hebrews, we get a little more uh, insight into him. Let's go to back to Hebrews, and uh, what we'll see, we'll see here, 
Puya, would you read for us Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 through 3? Sure, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Mm. Hmm. Jason, here we have Melchizedek pointed again or brought out. How does his life, his ministry point forward to the high priestly role of Jesus? Well, as we've discussed here, uh, Jesus' own origin, uh, he did have an earthly father and an earthly mother, but his origin was a lot more unique than most humans. And the same thing here with Melchizedek, his origin, his background is also unique. So we see the similarity between Jesus and Melchizedek having an origin that's mysterious, confusing, but yet one thing that's clear, clearly coming from God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from above. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you also notice that he received tithes of Abraham? Mm -hmm. Interesting to note. I, yeah. I didn't know it was possible to be without father and without mother, which, which, which causes me to wonder mm -hmm. if this Melchizedek is actually the Son of God mm -hmm. coming down mm -hmm. and meeting, because doesn't the Lord meet him under the oaks at Mamre too, mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. the destruction of yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah? I don't know, but but... My, my, my brain says you can't exist without a father or a mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's just a mysterious character, as was pointed out, who, who points forward mm -hmm. to the true great high priest. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Or maybe, mm -hmm. maybe it's the, the Lord himself who comes down as king of Salem and, and king of, of peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and the Hebrews, we know, took meticulous records or had meticulous records of genealogy. Mm -hmm. And here you have no record of mm -hmm. such mm -hmm. with Melchizedek. Pedro. It's funny it interesting here because uh, Jesus is, is compared with uh, King Melchizedek instead of, uh, of, Ab of Aaron because Aaron had a, uh, that genealogy or, or that connection of replacement and showing that Jesus is unique. He's, he's a high priest and he's an eternal high priest. And, and, it, and I, I, I like it, the interesting connection between his name, Melchizedek, you know, king of righteousness, which is, which is translating here, and also king of Salem, king of peace. And those are two titles of God. And uh, uh, that's the first time I'm hearing it, that connection between mm. uh, uh, Melchizedek being but possibly, uh, you know, God bring, coming to present himself to Abraham. So even the meaning of his names point to mm -hmm. Jesus. Sabina, what else do you see here? I also find it very interesting that even though we don't know much about him, it sounds like he knew Abraham well, so much so that he identifies who Abraham is and he blesses Abraham, calling him as, you know, Abraham of God Most High. Mm -hmm. So it, it's very interesting to me that there is this lack of information about Melchizedek, and yet he was so knowledgeable about who Abraham actually uh, was in his people, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, Travis. And the fact that he was, as was mentioned earlier, that he's both priest and king. Mm -hmm. You know, this is something that only Jesus could fulfill. Yeah. And uh, then I was just sitting here while everybody's talking, he's king of Salem. Now, I'm not trying to reach for words, but I thought, well, the word Salem is in Jerusalem, his mm -hmm. holy city, mm -hmm. yeah. the king of Jerusalem. And I thought, maybe there's, I don't know if there's anything there or not, but I just thought, wow, that's something, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll probably get a thousand emails, <laughs> but, but this we know for sure, at very least, it's a very strong type of Jesus, the great high priest. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, but, but it may be that it is none other than the Lord himself uh, without father and mother, with no genealogy, who comes down to bless Abraham. Yep, and, and no record of his death either, apparently. Right. So, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Puya, you also had a point. Right. Um, I wanted to go back to what Travis was uh, commenting earlier, 
for me, I see this more as a typology, a symbol rather um, than Jesus himself, you know, becoming uh, this person of Melchizedek. I would see this more of as a symbol pointing forward to uh, a type of Christ, right? The the coming Christ, because I believe this 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 becomes clearer as we continue to study in Hebrews seven here, where it says that if you know if the the priesthood ministries of human beings were enough, where, why would there be the need for um, uh, a new a new type of priesthood to arise in the order of Melchizedek? Uh, pointing ahead to Jesus. So I would see this more of as a person who was a symbol or a typology that points forward to Jesus rather than Jesus himself, because uh, I don't think it would make sense if Jesus was already a priest as a man through Melchizedek and then come later as a man again. So I guess that would be my perspective here. So whatever or whoever Melchizedek was, then what we see is that he was a type of, he was pointing a shadow to the eternal high priestly mm. ministry, the Amen. great high priest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know that what we see here is that Paul in Hebrews is constantly trying to lift <laughs> the minds of his audience away from the earthly to the heavenly in the eternal. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, remember, he was constantly pulling them back to away from the earthly system of sacrifices to the heavenly sacrifice from the earthly temple and all everything that it was tied to it to the heavenly sanctuary the heavenly temple away from the earthly priests and into the heavenly high priests mm -hmm. what else Brittany would you read for us Hebrews 7 14 to 16 and how does it describe our great high priest I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Hebrews chapter 7, verses 14 through 16. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident if, in the likeness of Melchizedek, there arises another priest, who has come, not according to the law of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of of an endless life. <laughs> so every high priest, you know, there was there were laws in place for the priestly, the earthly priestly ministry, mm -hmm. but not the case with our great high priest, mm -hmm. right? He was appointed. This was a divine appointment according mm -hmm. to the power of an un endless life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What can you think of, I mean, why that matters for us and the importance of that today and the, having that assurance, Sabina? Mm -hmm. I think that especially in the context, if you consider the Hebrews and their journey, for them they already knew who Melchizedek was. And I find that the author of the book is attempting to point them to the fact that if they were even having some regard to Melchizedek, even more they should regard Jesus. And I think that in then bringing that to our lives also, sometimes, you know, we may be just attached to some of our uh, traditions and things that we can just see in short sight, like the Hebrews in, in this point they were, uh, when God wants sometimes to provide for us much more than we can ask, than we can imagine. And I think that Jesus in being pointed as uh, in that space and, and really for me it's an evidence that God wanted to help open up their hearts and their minds that they were holding to something that was good but there was something better for them. Mm -hmm. Much better, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Pedro? I find it interesting here to con the connection he makes because the high priest's work was for Jews. In many ways people always look into the Jews and the sanctuary message and now Paul as he writes to the Hebrews he's also making a universal high priest like Melchizedek, he was not attached to the people of Israel, he was not a, uh, a high priest of the order of Aaron through the promise of Mount Sinai, he was a universal high priest and he's comparing Jesus as now as our universal high priest. We don't have to be Jews to receive the blessing of the high priest, the intercession for our sins and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question here. What other inspired testimonies do you find in Scripture that assure us of the eternal nature of the incarnate Son of God, or that point to the fact that there's no beginning and no end? 
Brittany? I think of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 1, um, we have a reference of Jesus being the Alpha and the Omega, um, okay. which is in the Greek alphabet, the, the A and the Z, like the beginning and the end. Um, so that verse is one that I think of. All right, mm -hmm. very good. Jason? I think of the beginning of the Gospel of John, where mm -hmm. it talks about how he was the Word and he was with God and was God. Mm -hmm. So there's yes. identification there, no beginning, no end, with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very good. Where else might we see any inspired testimonies that, make, uh, that point to that? Sabina? We also have in Colossians, in the first chapter of Colossians, when it says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of, over all creation, that for by Him all things were created, that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, and there it goes. So. Well, and that's Colossians chapter 1, 15 yeah. to 18. Puya, anything mm -hmm. else? Yes, uh, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 uh, says that for unto us a child is born and then gives the list of names of that child, the coming Savior. And one of the title that is given to the incarnate Son of God is Everlasting Father. So He is everlasting. He has eternal life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Haiti? Also in the book of Micah, another Messianic prophecy that foretells where Jesus would be born in Bethlehem um, says towards the end of the verse, it's Micah 5 verse 2, um, the one to be ruler in Israel whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. Mm -hmm. So we see his eternal nature here, even, even foretold when, when he's being described, you know, before he's even come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've read here that we have a great high priest whose ministry is forever. Does this mean that Jesus performs a ministry of a great high priest throughout eternity? Or is there a point where his work as high priest ends? Mm -hmm. Brittany? I was thinking about that and then I was reading in my Bible in Revelation chapter 21 where we have a picture of the new um, heaven, the new earth, the new Jerusalem. Um, and if you'd like, we could turn there and, and read that verse together because there was an that. interesting uh, thing that I hadn't noticed before in Revelation chapter 21. And verse 22. Revelation 21, 22, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it says, But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. And just thinking about that, it says in the New Jerusalem, there's no temple. And throughout Scripture, in the Levitical system, as well as when Jesus came to this earth, there was a temple in existence where sacrifices were being offered. But if in the New Jerusalem there's no temple, it says Jesus and the Father, they're the temple. We don't need the sacrifices to continually be offered or for us to ask for forgiveness anymore. Um, because at this mm -hmm. point, when the New Jerusalem comes, sin has been eradicated. Mm -hmm. um, and only those who've accepted Christ and have been redeemed are in this New Jerusalem. Uh, so to me, that shows that there, there's a time for Jesus to be our high priest and intercede, but then there's a time where he will no longer need to do that work of um, forgiving our sins because sin will be done away with. And doesn't the Bible also say that he comes as King of kings and Lord of lords? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. him coming as kings means that he would have laid aside that work as high priest because that part of his ministry would have been finished. Mm -hmm. Puya. Yes, and along that line, I also want to point out another implication of uh, his eternal reality, right? Um, as, as we look at this, this uh, priesthood ministry in Leviticus, everything was done in the context of a covenant where God made an oath uh, to, to, to give them a promise. And now uh, God made that oath and covenant with Abraham and with the priest and with the Israelites. But an oath stay in force so only as long as the members of those covenant are alive. Mm -hmm. And now I'm coming back to Jesus making a new covenant and him having eternal, rea eternal life, eternal uh, nature. 
this covenant that he has established between human beings and God mm -hmm. will forever remain even when it comes to uh, the point of him no longer needing to serve on behalf of us. Uh, his, his connection with humanity will remain forever. And I believe that implication is so profound. Mm. Mm. It is. Yeah. You know, one of the most, uh, another major difference between the high priestly ministry or role of Jesus and that of the Levitical priesthood was not only the eternal nature of Jesus, mm -hmm. but also that he was sinless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Travis, would you read that for us in Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 through 3? Another major difference we see here between the high priest and the Levitical priesthood and that of Jesus. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he himself is also subject to weakness. Because of this he is required, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer sacrifices for sins. Mm. Mm -hmm. But then in chapter 7, it's going to say Jesus is different, mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. right? Can I read that verse? Yes, would you please? In, mm -hmm. uh, in Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 26, uh, obviously speaking about Jesus here in this section, for such a high priest was fitting for us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, mm. separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's the sinless, yeah. the mm -hmm. perfect high priest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, a, yeah. what a testament to character. You notice the description there, sinless, holy, undefiled, but it's harmless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A high priest who is able to deal gently with the sinner. And aren't, isn't that what people need assurance of today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That when they confess their sins, when they repent, when they um, want to make a change in their lives, that they have a high priest who has gone before them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and has yes. won that victory and is able yes. to grant it as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. What other qualities of Jesus, our great high priest, are noted in this passage? Shana, is there anything else you notice there um, that from the fact of Jesus' high priestly ministry? Not only was he sinless, but he he reigns forever as, as our high priest, even though he won't necessarily have to intercede on our behalfs anymore once sin is over. And that's also a difference that I notice between the Levitical priests and Jesus, our high priest. The Levitical priest had to also offer offer sacrifices for himself but due to the fact that jesus our eternal high priest was sinless and harmless um he doesn't have to offer a sacrifice for himself which is is even more reassuring that someone who is perfect is advocating for me mm -hmm. amen amen what an assurance that is huh mm -hmm. perfect high pri uh, priest pedro now, I find it beautiful that the description of Melchizedek gives us the understanding of what Christ is doing right now and also what he will do for eternity. He will be king for righteousness, and the Bible tells us that uh, righteous dwells, will dwell after sin is destroyed in, in Revelation, as you read. And, and also he will bring peace. You know, we're looking in a world that is, is so much turmoil, so much war, so much division, mm -hmm. and our high priest is bringing us peace. He can bring us peace today amidst our trials, but He's going to be eternal peace mm -hmm. with no more division, pain, That's and suffering. Right. That's right. Yeah. Travis. So I'm thinking, you know, the, about the similarities and the differences between the priesthoods, and I'm thinking, you know, we just read earlier in, in Hebrews chapter 5 that the high priest would have compassion because he was similar. But then I'm thinking, but Jesus came in the likeness of human flesh, mm -hmm. and He suffered, and I thought, Wow, but Jesus experienced in, in almost every case anything that we could experience in life. You know, if you live as a person in life and you go through the different circumstances, you suffer different, you know, persecutions and things. 
But Jesus, through the life, it's like he, from every point, was attacked. It said that he was tempted at all points as we were, and yet without sin. It's like Jesus can identify with each and every individual. Like in the Bible, he's even given names. You know, he's the counselor and he's the comforter. It's like every name applies to my special or a certain special person's need. And this, now he's our high priest. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's like he can so identify it with us, but yet he's so vastly different. And it's like, I have someone who can have compassion, who identifies with me, and yet has the power to save. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's beautiful. Mm. Amen. Think about your own experience in your own life uh, and where you had found comfort or encouragement in the fact of knowing that Jesus was not only without blemish as uh, your substitute, but was also a faithful and great high priest. When has that reality been a comfort to you? Mm -hmm. Who can share that experience mm -hmm. in their lives? Puya. For me, this reality becomes um, real in moments when I fall. Mm. Mm. I can look to the Savior, I can look to Jesus, and, and I, I believe Travis put it so beautifully there earlier he can relate to my weaknesses because he was also fully human and yet without sin. Mm. So Jesus is compassionate and able to save to the uttermost. Mm. And so for me, in moments when I fall short, is when this reality of the love of Jesus Christ and his perfect sinless um, atonement becomes so meaningful. Mm. Mm -hmm. What an encouragement there. Mm -hmm. Anybody else, you're thinking back on your life and that that reality of Christ's perfect substitution and then as a great high priest and what it has done for you. Travis. Again, I'm just going to go back to this fact. You know, he's here Jesus is, right, obedient. I'm thinking of him without blemish. Well, J Jesus has said in Matthew 5, 17 and 18, I didn't got, come to destroy but to fulfill the law. He fulfilled the law on my behalf so that I become the righteousness of Christ in Him. I'm hidden under His obedience and under His grace and under, you know, I'm hidden in Christ. But there's another powerful thing here is that He's also showed me that I can be victorious over sin in my life currently now. And so, so Jesus obeying as a human showed me that I can have the power through a connection with the Father, right, through Jesus, but also that where I failed, that's all covered. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it is really beautiful to me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jason, would you look up for us here, Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. An interesting thing that was mentioned of him is that he was higher than the heavens. <laughs> <laughs> when did Jesus, our great high priest, become higher than the heavens? The New King James Version says in Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 through 11, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Mm -hmm. Lavinia, I want to give you a moment to find John 17 verse 5, but what have we seen here? When has he declared this at higher than the heavens? Mm -hmm. Brittany. When he gave his life, when he died for us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Lavinia, what does that say? John 17, verse 5, reading from the New Living Translation. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. Mm. All right. Mm. So I just want to challenge what Brittany said because I agree with her, but it's actually a little more mm -hmm. because. He dies, but it's in His glorious resurrection, mm -hmm. ascension, and exaltation before the Father. Mm -hmm. You know, who is this King of That's glory? Right. 
<laughs> you know, when the angels sing, yeah. because mm -hmm. they'd never seen this before. Mm -hmm. when, when, when Christ dies on the cross, the incarnate Son of God, and says in his last prayer, Father, into your hands. I don't think the angels were going, this is no problem. This is, mm -hmm. they, they, were, they were watching, I was going to say, holding their breath. I don't know if they did that. But you understand <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. They're seeing yeah. the mystery of the plan of mm. salvation unfolding. Mm -hmm. And I imagine when Christ rose from the dead, there was just this huge chorus that went up in heaven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when he ascends to the right hand of the Father, you know, I mean, I don't know, how do you get more exalted than the eternal Son of God? Mm -hmm. But there is this exaltation, like Brittany said, because of this amazing work of salvation mm -hmm. to rescue, can I use the word, a miserable planet mm -hmm. like us in rebellion yeah. yes. that reveals not only the love of God, John, but the lies of the deceiver who led the rebellion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think, you know, there's just this exaltation mm -hmm. um, as they see the, the plan of God. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was the word? I was going to say being successful, but that sounds so weak. Mm -hmm. Just Unfold, triumphing, yeah. Yeah. triumphing. Mm -hmm. There's just this great shout of uh, exaltation. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. It, Haiti, the book of Psalms, chap, uh, Psalms 24 also gives us a forecast there of what heavenly beings, how they would receive him. What does that say in Psalms 24, if you would read verses 3 through 10? All right, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says, Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands, and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Yes. Amen. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. <laughs> Thank you for that. Can you imagine, I mean, just the, a picture of perfect beings, angelic beings, and how they would receive the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And truly, it goes to show that the completion of His sacrifice and resurrection, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we yeah. see he, where He was glorified. Yes. Sabina, Revelation gives us a picture of that coronation. Mm -hmm. Would you read that for us here in Revelation 5, verses 6 through 13? And it, again, it shows how the, this Lamb was worthy and how He was received. Okay, so I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Revelation 5 from 6 to 13. It says, And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now, when he had taken this scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you are slain, and have redeemed us to God by your blood, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the numbers of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, <laughs> saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power 
and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them I heard saying blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Friends, there are people today, and perhaps even some of our viewers, who are perplexed by earthly affairs and things going on today. Mm -hmm. You know, our, it's easy to be observed and caught into the things that surround us. What would you say to someone today who, who just may need that encouragement and that hope? What would you tell someone today, perhaps even a viewer here, but about how this great high priest lifts us up from the earthly things mm -hmm. into heavenly realities? Mm -hmm. Pedro? Well, I'll say something that I, I, I'm accustomed to say. Jesus is mighty to save. We look into mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the, the work of this, the, the high priest and also of the work of the king, they have two specific works that Christ accomplished together. Now, the work of the king is the judging the people, and Jesus judged righteously in salvation. And as a high priest, he offers himself as part of the payment for that judgment. And we see that through, through, through Jesus uh, receiving that coronation in heaven, being above the heavens, mm -hmm. give us assurance that we can trust in him and we can together be also with the angels and the elders and everybody <laughs> praising God and says he is mighty yes. to save. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mighty to save. And Haiti, how else can this impact somebody's life? Uh, when I um, study the, the role of Jesus Christ as high priest, it makes me think of politics. Uh, every single country has different systems, but we all have leaders, we have representatives that are supposed to go and defend our needs, um, you know, kind of minister for us like Christ does, you know, in, in before our, our leaders, our governmental leaders. But I think to myself, here we have a representative who loves us, like Pastor Derek always says, with this immeasurable, unfailing love, mm -hmm. who paid for our sins with his literal blood, with his life. We have the ultimate representative, <laughs> and I would point them to that. The earthly representatives may fail us and often do fail us, but he will never fail us. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> we have just a couple of minutes remaining, but how else? And how, we want to know is how has this impacted you mm -hmm. as well? Lavinia. John, I just wanted to hearken back to what you said about how we would encourage our, our Hope Sabbath School team members. Mm. I think Isaiah 43 gives so much comfort that mm -hmm. this high priest, he's also the one who said in Isaiah, Isaiah 43, reading from the New Living Translation, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. Mm. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. Mm. Mm -hmm. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Mm -hmm. For I am the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. You know, after it's all said and done, when the high priestly work is done, done, his mediation and his intercession is done, what would bring him the greatest joy? Mm. What would that be? Brittany? Mm. I just think about the verse in Luke that says that there's more joy in heaven over one sinner who <laughs> repents than of all the just persons who need no repentance. So I think the most joy we can bring to Jesus' heart is to accept what he did for Amen. us and then go tell someone else, you mm. too can receive what I've received mm -hmm. and that will bring the most joy in heaven, sinners that are repentant. Mm. 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 Amen. And that's, I know that's what he longs and that's why he intercedes even for us today. We have a faithful high priest. Amen. And that is our prayer, that uh, we would fulfill that and see that, mm -hmm. His joy fulfilled. Pastor Derek. Thanks so much, John. Mm -hmm. What a great study. Were you blessed today? Mm -hmm. 
You know, we'd love to hear from you. You, you imagine the joy that will be in the heart of Jesus when he sees you in the kingdom. Um, what would you like to share with him today? You know, the Bible says we can pray. We pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Um, wouldn't you like to tell him today mm -hmm. how grateful you are mm -hmm. for what he's done for you? Mm -hmm. You know, I have a confession to make. Sometimes we can believe everything we've heard and, and yet we just keep living as if we're stuck on this planet, mm -hmm. living for today. Mm -hmm. I want to suggest to you that of anyone on the planet, we as Christians should be expressing our thanks mm -hmm. to God, yeah. to our great high priest, our savior, our soon coming king. I want to challenge you today to take some time, wherever you are, and say, Jesus, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for what you've done for me. And then we've learned that you can't keep that to yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to go and share with someone else that Jesus loves them with an immeasurable and unfailing love too. Mm -hmm. Let's bring joy to the heart of Jesus mm -hmm. today. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, oh, we thank you for this study. Jesus, our faithful priest, high priest, higher than the heavens, exalted by a myriad of angels. And we would praise you today also, Jesus. Mm -hmm. We would praise you, Father, that you love the world so much that you sent your only Son. We would praise you, Holy Spirit, that you are constantly turning hearts toward the Savior so that you're not willing that any should perish, Lord God, but that all should come to repentance. We just want to thank you and praise you today for your amazing grace. And we long for the day when we will stand with joy in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. You've got a reason to rejoice today. Now go out and be a blessing to those around you.